Well, to discuss this further this morning, I'm joined in the ANN7 studio by political analyst Mr. K.F. Melinda Jr. joins us in studio. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us uh, here on ANN7. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Quite uh, the developments over the weekend. We heard from uh, President Robert Mugabe late last night. Not really what uh, people were expecting. Would you agree? I think definitely not what people were expecting. Uh, the people of Zimbabwe were very um, optimistic at yeah. this point in time. And after the occurrences in the afternoon with the Central Committee, the assumption, once again assumption, mm. was that uh, whatever press conference was to be held at night would be him announcing his resignation. But no formal statement came out saying that that was the, the agenda for mm -hmm. the press conference. Mm -hmm. um, so let's continue to be optimistic but a calculated optimism. Mm. Um, I, I think the problem with a lot of analysts right now, especially with uh, hashtags and retweets and likes on social media, is instead of people analyzing the situation that's there, what people are do, trying to do is be prophetic and try and uh, um, you know, prophesy what is yes. going to happen in yes. the future, which we cannot do, especially not at this point in time. Mm. I think especially after yesterday's press conference, that's the best way to move forward with yes. regards to this. Mm. But mm. Let's, let's unpack what Robert Mugabe did say during mm. that, uh, that press briefing, not so much what he didn't say. He did mm. say that he will be presiding over a ZANU-PF Congress come December. What mm. details do we have about this and what is the purpose of this? I think that take would be the best and I advise everyone to take that stance where let's analyze what has been said as yes. opposed to try and prophesy what's, what, what, what might happen or what hasn't been said. Mm. Um, first and foremost, looking at um, the situation with ZANU-PF, the internal situation, which is the Central Committee, and him presiding over a Congress. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. um, I hate to use the word, but it's, it's, one, it's baffling and, and he seems delusional. Um, he has, uh, according to the constitution of ZANU-PF, mm. he has been removed from yes. the party, both as first secretary and president, as well as an ordinary member. Uh, so there is no way that he could possibly uh, preside over um, the Congress in December. That, mm. is, that is very unlikely to happen. Mm. Um, in terms of um, what, what he did say in regards to, I think the whole premise of the speech which is why I said he seems a bit delusional, is he was being hopeful and optimistic and speaking like a visionary, yeah. um, as if to say that he doesn't realize that the whole nation doesn't want him there. I mean, we heard he alluded to the agricultural season and the rains coming forward. It, he was speaking as if he was Robert Mugabe in 1980, you know, trying to uplift his nation, where, no, people aren't listening to him in that capacity anymore. Yeah. It's as if he's ignoring the voice of the many Zimbabweans out there. Uh, even when he spoke of how he did acknowledge that he knew what the party had done, you know, the developments within the party, but he also alluded to individuals. He didn't specify that this was a unanimous ZANU-PF decision. Hmm. He said that individuals had sort of orchestrated this against him. Um, so once again, I think he is, um, to put it in the best way possible, in denial hmm. of the reality that his party and his people no longer want him. And, and on that topic, he also mentioned something along the lines of uh, ZANU-PF and, and the country staying united and, and, and focusing. Mm. What, was he, what was he trying to, to allude mm. to there, would you say? Uh, uh, once again, I think he's, he's, he's trying to be, uh, you know, that, that visionary, that, uh, that leader. You know, mm. And um, one of your other guests uh, alluded to, the, to, the best, to it in the best possible way, called the Damascus moment. Mm. Uh, but I think it's too late for Robert Mugabe. Uh, to try and uh, be that uh, father figure of the nation and be that person who talks of, you know, the rainy season and, and you know, let us unite and move mm. forward as one. Uh, Zimbabweans have decided on their own without him to unite and move on as one. Another thing is that all of a sudden, he has come and decided to acknowledge everything that's going on in Zimbabwe. He's mm. for the first time in many years acknowledged that our um, economy is in ruins. For the first time, he's acknowledged the divisions that are within his own party. Mm. He has acknowledged the hate speech, and he has acknowledged that um, senior government officials are squabbling on national television. Mm. Um, I mean, like I said, slightly delusional, and, and the people of Zimbabwe see this. And it's mm. a little too late, it's wouldn't you say? Way too late. <laughs> Far too late. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's talk about his sort of demeanor during that speech yesterday. A lot of people mm. on social media <clears throat> stating that it seemed as if he was, he was reading a pre-written speech, as if someone had told him, listen, take this and read this. Do you agree mm. with that, or do you think that he was actually speaking uh, his truth? 
I think I think that was I think we heard Robert Mugabe speaking. Okay. I think we definitely heard Robert Mugabe speaking. Um, we, we must run away from the fact that he has had his speeches written for him for the past ten years now, okay. um, with very little input from him. He's always had a speechwriter, but the past ten years have seen less input from him to the extent where he's written where he's read the wrong speech. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. Um, so um, yes, and and he he is an old man. Uh, he that was definitely Robert Mugabe speaking. However. In terms of demeanor, even if he was to have resigned last night, I don't think that was the stage upon a head of state resigns. Mm. Um, the presence of um, the military, the army generals, as well as uh, we also saw for the first time in a very long time, um, Commissioner of Police, um, Augustine Chihuri, uh, that would have, it would have looked as if he was under duress mm. and uh, coerced to, uh, to read that speech if he had resigned. I think... Uh, his demeanor was, he seemed comfortable, and I think everything that was said yesterday, you know, the speech, the conscience of the speech, that was agreed upon by all parties who were, who were involved in what happened mm -hmm. yesterday. And, and mentioning the army, mentioning the people of Zimbabwe, there was huge protest action or Zimbabweans coming onto the streets and, and, and voicing their concerns, voicing mm. what they want. The army uh, tanks can, could be seen, you know, uh, escorting the people, if you want to put it that mm -hmm. way. What do you make of the way that Zimbabweans have reacted mm. to this entire situation? Actually, I think it was the other way around. I think it was the people of Zimbabwe supporting <laughs> the tanks. True, true. Um, it's, it's the solidarity, the unity. It's, it's, I mean, it, people, the people of Zimbabwe have really come together. Everyone has been brought together uh, under one cause, which is, you know, to, to lift our country from, from the doldrums. Mm. Um, and the people of Zimbabwe have, have, with one voice, clearly stated what it is that they want. There is no denying that. Uh, so we cannot run away. I think it was also a message, um, a very well-written message, a well-portrayed message to the international community. First and foremost to Jacob Zuma and Sadiq. Mm. Um, not to say that Sadiq has issued any formal statements, but after the initial statements that came from um, Jacob Zuma to say, we are okay, everything that is going on currently is intact. Uh, also to the African Union, to the international community, to say that we are safe as a people. Mm. Um, we believe in our military, in our defense uh, forces, and we are with uh, exactly what they're doing. I think also looking at Robert Mugabe's speech, we need to look at, remember we said we want to focus on what he did say. Yes. And what he definitely did say was that, and what he definitely did do last night was exonerate the military. Hmm. I think we have, in, in, in a very large way, moved away from calling this a military coup. He did say that he understood why the military decided to intervene. He did say that they intervened, uh, even though there were some pros and cons, I think those were his actual words, mm -hmm. there were some pros or cons. He did understand the need and the relevance for their intervention. He did say that uh, to the largest to the extent, um, the Constitution has been followed. Um, so I think yesterday was very important and, and historic in saying... Um, that the generals, that this is not a military coup. Mm. Mr. Malindi, I want to I wanna focus on that uh, 12 p.m. deadline today, but just stay with us. We are going to continue engaging with you. But now uh, about the man who could be the next president uh, of Zimbabwe. Let's take a look at the profile of uh, Emerson Namgagwa. Uh, nicknamed Nguenya, the crocodile, because of his ruthlessness. 75-year-old is a veteran of the struggle to end white minority rule in Zimbabwe. Sentenced to 10 years in prison in the early 1960s for bombing a train. Also spent uh, many years in exile where he trained as a lawyer. Taking a further look, Nguenya served as Robert Mugabe's personal assistant as well as his bodyguard. In 2004, lost his post as the secretary in ZANU-PF, accused of openly angling for the post of vice president. Come back in 2008, made Mugabe's chief election agent, served as vice president of Zimbabwe from 2014, and dismissed as VP by Mugabe on the 6th of November, 2017.
Well, we are still joined uh, in studio this morning by political analyst Mr. Malindi, but also joining us now is uh, Zimbabwe People's Democratic Party's Fortune Mlalazi. Um, uh, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here good on morning, ANN7, you. and thank you for staying with us. Uh, so let's let's just start with your reaction. Yesterday we heard from uh, Robert Mugabe during a late night uh, press briefing statement. What do you make of what uh, Robert Mugabe had to say? Well. Um, typical of Robert Mugabe, always cunning. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think there are quite a number of issues that we need to look at. Uh, first is that uh, the people of Zimbabwe realize that it is indeed possible to remove Robert Mugabe. It is indeed possible to unite uh, behind one cause and get into the streets with the support, of course, of the army, of which we, we, we can have quite a number of discussions about the army. But uh, uh, what is uh, good is that a precedence has been set that we can unite as a people, get into the streets, and uh, demonstrate against Robert Mugabe. Hmm. Is it possible to remove Robert Mugabe? I mean, there is that 12 p.m. deadline. If he does not meet that deadline, what happens? What are the steps forward? Um, I also think in regards to yesterday's uh, press conference uh, that people, we jumped the gun yes. by saying that Robert Mugabe has refused <laughs> to resign. Um, I'm not coming from a political uh, party stance as mm. a politician. So I'm going to analyze it, you know, from a strictly academic or, you know, a political scientist mm. uh, point of view and say that he hasn't refused to resign. Okay. He just didn't mention it. Mm. Like I said, Zimbabweans are optimistic and we are clearly tired after 37 years. But I'm sure that after five days, mm. we can wait another, you know, three mm. or four days to do this in the right way. Mm. Um, the deadline has still been set which is 12 noon today. Um, after that, if we have not heard from the president, then we can move to take the constitutional process of impeachment, which I'm sure our colleagues within parliament would then come together as a coalition to say, do we have two-thirds majority? Of which, if I'm not mistaken, ZANU-PF has two-thirds majority. That is, if uh, certain elements within ZANU-PF do not defect from um, Emerson Nangagwa's coalition. Uh, faction. Yes. But Mr. Mlalazi, if Robert Mugabe had the intention of resigning, would he have mentioned issues like he was going to uh, reside over this Congress uh, set to take place uh, in, de in December? Would he speak of, of Zimbabwe coming together as a country and focusing and, and, and staying united if he had the intention of stepping down as the president? Look, that's the tricky part that Robert Mugabe has undermined everyone. Hmm. Everyone has been undermined. And now he's uh, basically showing a middle finger to the party, to the army, mm. that I will preside. It's not that he didn't know that the party has, uh, has uh, recalled him or has expelled him or whatever that they call it. Uh, he knew and he's trying to send a message clearly that Robert Mugabe is ZANU-PF mm. and ZANU-PF is Robert Mugabe. Mm. The only thing that we need to do as Zimbabweans is that uh, Zimbabwe is not Robert Mugabe, and Robert Mugabe is not uh, Zimbabwe. He can be ZANU-PF, we don't mind that. It is their business. But he definitely is not Zimbabwe, and Zimbabweans must remove him. Hmm. Another thing that uh, Robert Mugabe said during that speech was that uh, ZANU-PF should stick to its constitution, meaning that due process should be followed in, in him stepping down. You did mention that he would need to submit a letter to Parliament. Parliament is meeting tomorrow, Tuesday. Do you think we will see this happen? Let's not jump the gun, but let's just discuss this. Uh, I think ZANU-PF wise, ZANU-PF has followed the constitution of the party mm. in regards to recalling him um, and expelling him from the party. So yes, constitutionalism has been followed, uh, not of the nation obviously, because they're not governed by the constitution of the nation, they're governed by their own uh, constitution. But I mean, the process is moving in steps, in stages. And the first stage is to recall him from the party which means his party no longer supports him hmm. uh, as first secretary and president of the party. Yes. Therefore, um, and then recall him or expel him as a, even an ordinary member of the party, which they have done to him, multiple other members of the G40 crew as well. From there, he now just stands as the president of the country. ZANU-PF cannot recall uh, Robert Mugabe as the president. Hmm. And if he does not resign by 12 noon today, then parliament sits and then the impeachment process begins. I think we've been using the word impeachment very lightly and the assumption is that people just sit down, 
vote and then he's gone. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's a process, but the initial um, stage of that process is for there to be a vote for impeachment process to begin. Mm. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about how we got to this point. I mean, uh, Robert Mugabe has been ruling for, for 30 plus years. Uh, listening to conversations, Zimbabweans have been unhappy for quite some time. How did we get to this point now and why hasn't it happened uh, sooner? Well, firstly, maybe we, we need to congratulate uh, those in ZANU-PF that mm. uh, uh, they have seen the light. They have seen that Robert Mugabe as an individual is a stumbling block to progress. Uh, uh, and for the first time, they are talking about constitutionalism. Mm. However, we need to hold them accountable that there are so many clauses of the constitution that have not been implemented and they have been part and parcel of this uh, 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 challenge. Going back to your question, you see, Instead of creating institutions in Zimbabwe, we, in, from 1980, we started creating individuals. And the individual of Mugabe was made an institution. Therefore, it made it difficult. Everything surrounded him. Mm. He was the one center of power, as you hear them pronounce, which then makes it difficult for any progress because uh, this man will have to to say lots of things. We, we've seen people, of, uh, 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 people from ZANU-PF being expelled and becoming nothing after that because theirs was centered on one individual called Robert Mugabe. Therefore, that is where our major problem was, that we made an individual to become an institution and forgot about all these other institutions that we were supposed to be creating and strengthening. Mm. Would you like to add, add, add to that uh, answer possibly? I think definitely. I mean, uh, very well said. <laughs> uh, but just to add on, uh, I think he has also forgotten, as I said before, I think he's a, a bit delusional, that the Constitution has changed since then. Um, and people were looking at him probably dissolving a Parliament, which he can no longer do mm. as an individual. Mm. Uh, furthermore, even the Constitution of ZANU-PF, I, mean, I think he's not aware of the intricacies. He's no longer aware of the intricacies. Not to uh, take away from his academia, uh, but these are the last kicks of a dying horse mm. and for him to assume that he still has that power or constitutional authority to take any sort of process that might save him from his impending um, um, being kicked out of both the party and and office uh, no, he, he has no mm. he has no constitutional uh, power or authority. Mm. Gentlemen, let's let's shift gears briefly before we conclude and chat a little bit about uh, Emerson Inamgagwa. We've gone through some of uh, his uh, history uh, within ZANU PF and 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 all of that, but him as president of uh, Zimbabwe ultimately, good fit, a good person to take and, and and fill those shoes. What would your opinion be? Well. Definitely, he's not the fit person. Mm. We need to look at the individual. Look, like, like I said, that for us to move uh, forward as a country, we need to do some form of audit. What did you do? There are quite a number of things that Emerson Nangakwa did, and uh, the whole lot of ZANU PF uh, leadership, including the army. Uh, in our settles, we call Nangakwa the butcher of Escordini, mm. a man who was directly involved in the butchering of more than 20,000 people from the southern part of Zimbabwe. And he has not said a word about it. And we know clearly that uh, uh, even from 2000, when, in the, when MDC emerged, that he was a, a key player in terms of a, a, a violence against the people of Zimbabwe, in terms of rigging of elections, even in terms of corruption. There are quite a number of things. Hence the reason he had to run away from the country when he was fired, because he know that he is a pure criminal. Therefore, we need to be very careful in terms of moving forward. Do we want to move in settles from Mugabe to another young Mugabe, probably more strong Mugabe, uh, or we need to move our country forward in a way that will make everyone happy? We have so many problems in our country. We have so many people that are suffering. Should we move in settles? Hmm. Someone may say, Robert Mugabe has been the stumbling block. Whoever comes in, there will be some form of progress, mm. of which I may agree. But the individual of Emerson Mnangagwa is a big no. Mm. Mr. Malindi, <clears throat> quickly, your, your opinion. Uh, we can't run away from the fact that, I mean, uh, a number of things that he has stated are, are, are quite true. Um, not just about Emerson Mnangagwa, but a lot, a lot of people within ZANU-PF. But we can't also run away from the fact that because Robert Mugabe has been made an institution, a lot of people had to follow suit. Mm. So it was either my way or the highway. Uh, and a lot of people, I want to assume, a lot of people were made to do things that they didn't want to do. 
um, social media was rife and speaking about the vice chancellor of the University of Zimbabwe and why he gave um, Grace Mugabe a doctorate within three months. And I mean, he's not a politician. And he did what he had to have done, hmm. what he had to do at that point in time. Right now, Emerson Nangagwa, I think, is the only person who can unite ZANU-PF. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, at this current point in time, he is the only person forthwith who can then, uh, you know, also unite the transitional, um, the national transitional mm. authority. He might not be the best candidate to run our country uh, in totality, but at this point in time, I think, um, and I, I hate to have to use these words, he's our only option. Mm. And um, within the party, ZANU PF, because we can't run away that the presidency has to stay with ZANU PF at this point in time until further notice of what the way forward actually is. Okay. Um, but also, we must look at, I want to notice that Emerson Mnangagwa's rhetoric has changed over the past two years. And he has started to talk of uh, inclusivity, the international community, in regards to uh, developing mm -hmm. the economy. Two, two different opinions here. But, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We're going to have to leave it there today. We appreciate you talking to us and sharing your views with us. That was a political analyst, Mr. K.F. Malindi Jr., as well as Zimbabwe People's Democratic Party's Mr. Fortune Mlalazi, joining us here in studio this morning, chatting to us about the current situation in Zimbabwe. That 12 p.m. deadline looming for Robert Mugabe. Will he resign as the president of uh, ZANU-PF? Well, he's been kicked out there, but uh, as the president of uh, the country, stay tuned to ANN7. We are going to continue unpacking these details and these discussions. It's time for a quick break. Stay with us.